Today we are talking about perimeter and area in the coordinate plane. And our standard is that you, we are using coordinates to prove geometric theorems. So one of the things that we want to look at is being able to classify polygons. So we name polygons by the number of sides. So if we have a polygon with three sides, we call it a triangle. Four sides, quadrilateral, so on and so forth. Some of these you might not know. A 12 side is a dodecagon, nine side is a nonagon. Um, and if it's more than what's on this chart, then we just call it an n-gon. So if it's a 25 sided shape, we call it a 25 gon. Um, and you are able to access this chart um, whenever you need to answer these kinds of questions, but it's just good to know. The other thing we have is this idea of convex versus concave. So when I have a shape that is convex, that means that none of this shape has points that are interior. So I can draw one of my quadrilaterals that I had. But if I was to try to draw a quadrilateral or any other shape where I have that interior point, instead of them all being exterior, that would be an example of concave. But this first one is an example of convex. So let's take a look at some better examples. So convex is kind of like flex. It sounds very similar. Um, when you flex, you make your muscles, um, and you're showing that, and you're popping them kind of outside. So we're thinking it has to be outside of the shape. When we're thinking about concave, in a cave. So it has to be inside. So at least one point has to be inside on our shape. Now, we are going to need to remember the distance and the midpoint formulas for what we're doing today. This is what we've been practicing for the last couple of days. And then the other thing we'll need are the perimeter and area formulas. So perimeter of a triangle is adding all the sides together. Perimeter of a square adding all the sides together, or since the sides are all the same length, just multiplying four times the side length. You could also note that this is side plus side plus side plus side. Perimeter of a rectangle, two times the length plus two times the w, and that's because we have length plus length plus width plus width. And then our area formulas, we can't adjust those any. Area of a triangle, a square, and a rectangle. So what we are going to be doing is taking three or four coordinates and graphing a shape, and then we will be finding the perimeter in the area of said shape. So when I look at this first one, I have A is at negative two, three. B is at three, negative three. C is at negative two, negative 3. And then I want to go ahead and connect those dots. And so step one is finding the length of each side. So I have side AB. To find the length from A to B, I can't just count it because it's going across the diagonals there. So if my line is not vertical or horizontal, I must use the distance formula. So I know that A is negative 2, 3, and I know that B is 3, negative 3. So I'm going to sign x1, y1, x2, y2, and this is why we reminded ourselves what the distance formula was. So I'm going to plug that in. I'm going to say x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that's going to be 5 squared plus negative 6 squared, which will then be 25 plus 36, which will give me the square root of 61, which is about 7.8. I also want to find the length of my other sides, but those are a little bit less work. 
because those lines are not diagonal, they're horizontal or vertical. So when I'm looking for the length of BC, I can just count this length right here. So I can count that I have one, two, three, four, this is five units long. And I can do that same work for my AC. So when I look at AC, that one is one, two, three, four, five, six units long. And so I have then my three measures that I need in order to find the perimeter. So I say 7.8 plus 5 plus 6 gives me 20.8. And that is the perimeter for this triangle. When I am looking for area, I need to only find the base and the height. So let's begin by graphing this. So I'm going to graph 1, 3, 4, negative 3, and negative 4, negative 3. And I can go ahead and connect those dots. So when we're looking at a triangle, the base is the length across um, what I'm going to call the bottom, which will be where I have my height. So my height comes from the tallest point to the shortest point, and my base is across that bottom. So in this case, I also do not need to use the distance formula because I have vertical and horizontal lengths. So I can see that the, um, the base has a length of 8, and the height is 6. And so when I plug that into my formula, 1 half base times height, base is 8, height is 6. So that is going to give me my answer of 24. And you would do the same thing if you were dealing with a square or a rectangle, just following those formulas. So, for this problem, I want to find the perimeter and the area of the square. So since everything is vertical or horizontal, I do not need to use the distance formula for any of my sides. So I can go ahead and then say that I have my lengths are 4, and they should all be the same, and they are. So the perimeter formula that I have tells me that I do 4 times the sides, so that would be 4 times 4, because that's the length of the sides, so my perimeter is 16. And then my area, I do the sides squared, which means that I will do 4 squared because that's the length of my side, which also happens to be 16. Now, this question also helps us start reviewing for the final and thinking about how do I know that I have a square? Well, if I have a square, I know that it has four right angles, and I also know that it has four congruent sides. So four congruent sides, and it has four right angles. Now I know that the four congruent sides part is from the definition of a rhombus, and the four right angles is from the definition of a rectangle. And when I have a shape that is both a rectangle and a rhombus, that is when I know that I have a square. But I also know that a rectangle has diagonals that are congruent. So if I can prove that this diagonal here is congruent to this diagonal here, then I can prove that I have a square. So what I will do then is I will find the distance of LN 
and I will find the distance for mn using the distance formula. For time's sake, I've gone ahead and worked that out off camera, but we see that when we finish, I have that those two diagonals are congruent, and so that is how I know that this shape must be a square.